I've never been introduced as welcome to the stage the Shane Todd. I was waiting for experience at the end of that. Give it up for William, everyone. Yeah. I brought him on tour. He came to Edinburgh with me, Glasgow, did a few shows. The grant money I got for that was insane because he, he genuinely is disabled, so he sort of. I was able to stay in great hotels. He wasn't, he was in Eva's budget, but you know what I mean? Like I, but I was given back because you know, I let him sit with me and stuff, but um, <laughs> Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Can't believe you did that. Why would you, why would you do that? Don't, uh, if, anyone, <laughs> if anyone ever goes to, what age you, man? 19, if you're seven and you do that, I go, quack, quack, mate, oh, quack, quack, like you. <laughs> As an adult, right, if someone goes quack quack, you don't have to do that. You were like, oh, quack. <laughs> this man saying quack quack, I better say quack quack back, but uh. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> uh, uh but uh. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, William did. Uh, come do some shows with me. Did a show in Edinburgh. Obviously William's a bit younger than me. I was like, what do you want to go and do? We'll just kill a day. What do you want to go and do? He's like, oh, can we go and do the Haunted Dungeon Tour of Edinburgh? And I was like, yes. Thought we would just look like two mates, because William's in his early 20s. I'm 30. People looked at us like they thought I bought him. You know what I mean? They were like... <laughs> and I would have got a discount on You know what I mean? But... <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Faulty goods, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> he loves it, he loves it, he loves it, he loves it. Uh, yeah, we, we were in Edinburgh. I go, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to do the Haunted Dungeon Tour. Waiting for the Uber, and you know the way an Uber tells you who the driver is, gives you the name? All I got was Majid, right? Majid in Edinburgh, coming in a white Skoda. I was like, right, William, we're looking out for Majid here, white Skoda. Five minutes later, white Skoda pulls up, just with 10 Majid, should it be there? Window goes down, I was like, that's us. All of a sudden, 50 year old bald white guy. All right, lads. And I was like, all right, mate. I went back inside. And, and, the, and the guy was like, you are waiting for a, an Uber? Yeah, mate, we are. Yep, I'm just waiting for a Majid. And he goes, lads, I'm Majid. <laughs> I, I looked at William and I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not. He was like a Keith or a Barry or something. Like that. I, was like, I was like, you're not. What's happened here? Um, let's get to the bottom of this, but we had to commit. Because he could see on his phone that we were there, we were on the wee dot to, to, to get picked up. You know what I mean? So we couldn't have been like, we're not us, you know what I mean? Because I've said before that I'm not me one. Where I'm from, like in my town, uh, it was May Day, and Coke Cola, we got my free cans of Coke to, uh, to like wee boys. <laughs> not just wee boys, but like we got... It wasn't like a promotion to get wee boys drinking coke, right? But it was like, walked up, got a free can of coke, drank it with some of my cool mates, right? And then I was like, that's... I'm going back. Give me your jumper. And I switched jumpers with a friend of mine. I walked back up. All right, can I have a free can of coke? And the woman went, I just saw you two seconds ago. It's one can of coke per child. And I went, I know, but I'm my brother. And she went, nah. You're the boy I served, and I was like, no, I'm not me. I'm another boy. And she's like, you can just have the can, it's 25p back then, you know what I mean? She's like, you can have it on a privileged home or something. But but I was like, why Why is he Majid? And that, we were in the back of the taxi, and I was sort of saying it out loud. I was like, why are you, why are you Majid? And then um, he's like a white, middle-aged Scottish guy, and he starts chatting to us. So you do the tour, lads? I was like, yeah, why are you Majid? And then... Um, <laughs> there's, there's gonna be like a great story behind this. What's going on in his life? And before I could ask that question, he goes, Did you do the dungeon tour? I went, We did, Majid. <laughs> I said, Yeah, we did. Before I could say why you called Majid, he goes, I'm banned from the dungeon tour. <laughs> I look at William and I was like, I don't give a fuck now why he's called Majid. Hey Majid, why are you banned from the booster? <laughs> so basically he explained that actors jump out at you and stuff. You know, people play historical characters. 
which I hate. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when a guy jumps out and he's like, oh, I am, I am a, a, a beggar on the street. And I'm like, you're, you, you, I can see you're, you're wearing sketch. You know what I mean? You just, you're wearing sketch. I can see, I see your sketch. It was like, I get it. Just get out of my personal space. And um, we saw you in Nando's before this, right? Don't, don't, don't chat to me. But, um, but the actors, jump, and Majid was talking about that. He's like, uh, one of the actors jumped out at me. I was on a date. He scared me a bit. I went, I had to do the scare you. What happened? He goes, I chin the gun. I think he gets to be called Majid, no problem, that's a pass. Let me write you a note to be called Majid. But he told us that the actor was playing William Wallace, and I was like, that's great, because it took like the English decades to defeat William Wallace, but all it took this time was just a 58-year-old Glasgow taxi driver who was white called Majid, just to absolutely spark him out. Braveheart would have been a, such a shit film if that was it. Freedom! But boom, like it's over, you know, and then... On that trip, I heard the best things I ever heard anybody say in my entire life. Me and William were walking past a gay bar in Glasgow. It was late at night, we were walking back from the gig. There was a gentleman standing outside the gay bar having a smoke. He's also got a wee drink there, and he's just loving life. And he's minding his own business, having a good night. A couple of lads start shouting homophobic abuse at this guy. Guy just stood his ground, kept smoking a cigarette. And one of the guys, calling him all the names of the day, and I swear to God, as me and William walk past, the guy shouts back to these guys, Put your dick in my mouth and we'll see who's gay then. <laughs> I lost my balance. I was like, what the fuck did he? What? <laughs> and th these guys are shouting homophobic abuse to this guy. He just comes back with, put your dick in my mouth and we'll see who's gay. The, g the guys like had no comeback for it. They just, they were so confused. They were like, what the, what? <laughs> what's the system here? Like, what, how would that? And then they were like, nah, we can't, we don't want any part of this. And, guy just goes back to smoking then I was like how does that work you know I, is it that if I put if I were made, if, for talk sake here if I if I were to William take your belt off no if I I'm paying him you know what I mean um I, are you saying mate if I sorry two seconds mate no come, come back I'm just, if I put my dick in your mouth is it would you say would I be gay if I get hard would I be but here's the thing mate I'm not no, wait two seconds. I'm just saying I'm, 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 I'm not like I'm fairly certain I'm not. But at the same time, I don't, I don't like carrot cake. I, I'm, I'm not a carrot cake person, right? But I reckon if you offered me the world's best slice of carrot cake, like cooked by like a Michelin star chef, I think I might enjoy that carrot cake. So. It's my comeback for everything now. My mom, I don't even live in my mom's house anymore. She said, tidy your room. I go, put your dick in my mouth. I'm gonna see who's gay, huh? <laughs> I've never said that to my mom, but uh, that could be offensive to someone. I don't know. I said something recently to a friend that she said was a bit homophobic. I was really embarrassed. I couldn't believe it. I apologized. She was telling me about her cousin, who's a gay guy. She told me he was opening up a business in the gay quarter of Belfast. He was opening up a gym in the gay quarter of Belfast. One name thinking, I went, nice one, how does that work? Like a, a gay gym? And she went. <laughs> she went. doesn't mean any business he opens is a gay version of that business. And I felt so bad. I was like, just because you said it's location and stuff, I was like, I don't even know how that would work. A gay gym. I was like, I apologize. I accept my apology. She was if I told you he was opening up a butchers in the gay quarter of Belfast, would you have thought it was a gay butchers? I was like, I, I, I would have wrongly presumed it was a meat of gay animals, and I don't even know if that will cost more or whatever, I don't know what the crack is with the regulations on that, you know, so I, I apologize, but I have the respect of uh, the gay community, of not just here, but everywhere really, this, this thing happened. Goes back to primary school, I was just minding my own business one day, P5, P6, playing a bit of football on the playground, and I was given an honor, I was given a responsibility, I was given a title that I've had to take forward for, for life really. Some older boys 
refer to me, they crown me as the gay lord. <laughs> Hey, Gaylord. <laughs> Thank you very much, lads. And I, we had a responsibility, but they they thought I was the guy for it. And I was I don't know what to say. I accept. I remember like calling a load of lads around in the playground, one of my mates, and getting really into it. Maybe too into it. I was like, gentlemen, I am the Gaylord. You will kneel before me. That's immature, that is immature and offensive, but um... Here's, here's what's great about being married, right? Here's what I love about being married. I've been married that long, but what's great is going away to different places. So we, we went to Rome, right? What's great about being married is the possibility that, and hear me out on this, that at some point my wife might be kidnapped, right? And he, but hear me out, I don't want that to happen, right? That would be terrible. But the cool bit about thinking about it is me trying to track her down in like some sort of cool European city like that because I wouldn't get the respect if she was just still my girlfriend or my fiance. You imagine me like confronting people in like a European city, maybe I'm wearing some sort of like long coat and scarf or whatever and I'm, imagine me beating about the place in, in Europe going, has anybody seen my, anyone seen my girlfriend? Is my, guys, real quick, anybody, anybody seen my girlfriend? Uh, say no, no worries. Fiance, even worse. Me going up there like bouncers and nightclubs and stuff. Hey, where's my fiance? <laughs> now though, when it happens, oh, oh, oh. couple Eastern European guys. Don't know why, but they're they're just like in some sort of bar. You know what I mean? They like own the bar. They've got their own special room in the back. They're playing cards. You imagine it now when I doof, get the door. In. <laughs> where's my wife? I said, where are his eyes? <laughs> you don't like the smell of something? <laughs> My wife. You know, they're playing cards, maybe I hit them with some sort of a, a line, like some unreal line, you know? Like, I know they know something. They're playing cards, I go, hey. Jack, change it, dude. Where's my wife? You know that? But me, ima imagine that. Imagine that. Still couldn't do shit about it. They go, yes, we have wife. I'd be like, no worries. You told her I was asking for. All right, guys. Enjoy the game. What are you playing? What are you, what are you playing? Oh, I like his. He's got a good hand, mate. I, he's got a good hand. Ukrainian boys flat out playing Jack, change it. I just I don't even know if they have. I know if they have it. In Ukraine, I don't know if Jack change it is a universal thing. I, that's just a thing I don't know. I don't. I would probably. Here's what I would do. I go, where's my wife? They go, we have her. I go, no worries. And then I go, you spend Jack change it. You go, what does Jack change it? I go, give me his car. I would teach. I would. It's a great game, very easy to play. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say Jack change it. At the end of me showing him, he would go, this is great game. What do you call game? I go. Shane change it, they call it Shane, they call it Shane change it back home. So tell everyone Shane change it. <laughs> Guys, I, I like your coat. I like your eyes. So I, I, mean, I can imagine someday. Hey, um, hey, it's cool that I look like a student teacher, isn't it? Um, the sort of student teacher you would absolutely roast back in the day. Like, I look at my face, like I can't, command authority to young people like I'm, I look like the sort of teacher like when your Spanish teacher was off I would come in like on a skateboard you know trying to be trying to be fucking I just come I come straight in you know what I mean I come in a skateboard nobody's looking up you're on your phones and stuff maybe I just you know I'm like guys what's up and then um, I'm, I'm wearing Heelys you know like, like I don't know there, people don't do that Ah, uh, don't have a car, guys, what's up? And uh, calling things radical, you know, I'd be like, guys, name's Mr. Todd, you can call me Shane if you want. And uh, today we're gonna learn a few things about hip hop. And, and, and you go, you go, yeah, maybe you should fuck off. And I'd be like, yeah, guys, no worries. And I would hit you with that classic T 
eat your being roasted line, which is, guys, maybe you can almost show me your own work, okay? <laughs> and then I would just go to the staff car park and cry, but you'd, st <laughs> but you'd still be able to see me. That's the face I, you'd still, I wouldn't know it. I just, I'm crying in my face, and you'd be like, is that, in there's that dickhead, cry he's crying, whole class at the window, he's crying in his car. I don't even know, and then I come back in, you know I've been crying. That's the sort of face I have, I have the sort of face that would happen, but then you'd all be on like a European ski holiday, you and for some reason your entire class, and you're having like drinks on a night out in some sort of apres ski type vibe, and then you'd get chatting to me, you'd see me, and you'd go, are you that guy 10 years ago, we, we made you cry, and I'd be like, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> my face, I'd be like, yeah. Oh, good days. And then you, I would get chatting to you, and you'd be like, Do you know what, mate? You're actually alright. This is the face I have. You go, You're actually alright, mate. And I go, No worries, guys. Can I get you as a pint? And you go, I mean, you should fuck off. And I just. <laughs> I'd be like, No worries, guys. Back in a second. And I'd just be on the snowmobile crying, but you'd still be able to see me. You'd be like, Guys, nah, he's, he's out there crying. He's on that snowmobile. <laughs> Fucking loser. That's just a face. <laughs> hey, what are you texting right now? <laughs> Who are you texting? Her mum. Her mum? <laughs> Best show I've ever been to in my entire life. <laughs> Can't cope. <laughs> I know reading about like Florence Nightingale, Amelia Earhart, like all these inspirational women throughout history who have stood up in the face of adversity. They coped. You know what I mean? Those women coped no matter what Rosa Parks coped with her situation. Girls in 2019, meme of a cat, can't cope. <laughs> can't cope. But, um... <laughs> no. <laughs> my dad's an old man, and uh, my dad likes to go to the gym. Still in good shape. My dad told me a story. He got in a bit of bother he got himself into recently. He was in the gym, and uh, my dad's working out. My dad's doing the deadlift, right? He's deadlifting. 69 years old, still doing it, still deadlifting. <laughs> There's a female PT beside him that he knows. He gets on well with her. He's deadlifting, she's beside him deadlifting. She like lifts it up. Now, my dad was telling me, she only started doing the deadlift a few months before this, and she's rapidly going up the weight. And my dad respects that, no matter who you are, my dad respects Aaron, right? Like, he loves it. And my dad decided to pay a compliment, but my dad went, here, fur play to you. Fur play to you for that. And the trainer went, excuse me? <laughs> what? And my dad went, just saying, fair play to you for lifting that weight, that's unreal. And he says, she just went the other way with it and went, Ar <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Should I not be lifting that weight? What's what are, you, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to, What are you trying to say? And my dad was like, get up, push up, back up. He goes, and my dad's like, I'm just saying that's unreal because you only started doing that exercise and you're flipping. He's like, I would have said that to anyone. And she was like, are you trying to say that I'm not as strong as you? And my dad's like, what are you talking about? He goes, I wasn't saying that at all. And like all these people just came over out of nowhere. And my dad says, this like 18 year old kid walk up to him in a vest and he's like, bro, it's pretty sexist. Now, I don't know, my dad said he's wearing a baseball hat back to front. I was like, I know, but sometimes in the gym, indoor guys can get the sun on the back of their neck. On the, and if you can't see, no, because you can't see, sometimes you, that will stop you lifting, that will stop you lifting weight, basically. You were just telling her that that was fair play to her for lifting that. Why should she not be lifting that? My dad's like, I'm not, I'm just giving someone a compliment. I didn't even think about whether they were male or female. And it kicks off. And the lady said to my dad, are you trying to say that men are stronger than women? And my dad, 69 years old, said he just had a fucking moment. And my dad said, well, no, I wasn't saying that, but... Geographically, he meant to say scientifically, right? He was geographically. Mathematically speaking, that's... My dad said, yeah. My dad goes, I think men are built to be a wee bit stronger. And that's what it is, okay? And I wasn't, I was trying to give you a compliment, and that's all it is, right? And you just go, oh, fuck off. And my dad left, my dad left the gym. Told my wife about that, basically my dad was trying to give someone a compliment. She said he was trying to say that 
you know, man from the moment Brie wasn't saying that. She was like... <laughs> Why are you trying to say that you're stronger than me? I, 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 didn't, I didn't say it. I did not say that. She goes, no. I could deal with any physical situation just as well as you. And I was like, that's fair enough. I don't even want to talk about this. Fine. Let's just leave it. But two weeks later, middle of the night, lights out, I get woken up to a wee tap on my shoulder. I was like, what is, what is going on here? What is going on? The middle of the night. This is, I know like, people maybe didn't say it, but like, don't, don't video record this, because this is coming out in special, it'll be on, on Amazon Prime, right, too. So, no, 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 just, and I, I feel like you're going back in with a video. If it's just a photo, that's fine, but at the same time, it's not a great angle. I mean, I'm just saying, on my website, she and Talk Company and on that, you'll get nice six by nine black and white to me just don't think for it. I'm just saying, right, if you're gonna do one, hold on two seconds. What's going on? I hear a whisper from my wife beside me, terrified. All I hear is, I think there's somebody downstairs. <laughs> what? I think there's somebody downstairs. And I went, you're trying to say there's somebody in our house? She goes, yes. What are you gonna do about it? And I said, what am I gonna do about it? We've got, we've got one of those electric beds, right? I said, how dare you assume that I should be the one to go downstairs and deal with this? I'm away back to sleep. I want you to beat his ball, like Guys, uh, thanks so much for coming out. Appreciate it.